Hello, and welcome to Book Break for Greece Public Library. I'm Kirstra. I'm one of the librarians here, and I moderate our Pints and Prose book discussion group. I'm joined, as always, by my favorite vacationer and reader, Claire. Thank you, Kirstra. I'm Claire, and I moderate our historical group on Facebook and as the page turns here at the library. Mm -hmm. And today, in honor of summer break and July, we are bringing you a Vacation Reads episode. Right. Kirsten's and my definition of a good beach read. Mm -hmm. So we have done a similar uh, show in the past, and we have discovered that what Claire and I like to read on our vacations, beaches, hammocks, what have you, are not necessarily the same as what other people like to read. So let's just talk a little bit about what makes a good vacation read for you. Right. So I, I like to really escape into my vacation reads. Sometimes I like something that I can really immerse myself in. Mm. I think a lot of people really like a light read, mm -hmm. um, kind of fluffier read, so to speak. But I also like a good murder during my vacation. So mm -hmm. a thriller is always on my list. Absolutely. Yeah, I was thinking about this a lot. And I think what it comes down to for me more than anything is plot. I like a fast moving plotty book. Yeah. For the summer cuz it holds your attention it like keeps you moving forward. Some of them you may not necessarily have to like work too hard to stay with. You know what I mean? Like there is for sure room for a challenging read, but that's not what I'm looking for on vacation. Yeah. I and you know what? I tend to put up more with preposterous, mm -hmm. you know, bonkers type things more so in vacation reads than than yeah. I would any other time yeah. of year absolutely so um but I, I I do have one of those excellent um I do like to get kind of dark too sometimes like you were talking thriller I think the last time we did had this conversation I mentioned a Gillian Flynn book <laughs> I, I like the dark and twisty. If it's got a plot yeah. to keep it moving, I'm right there. Yeah. Yeah. I think some people too, um, one thing I read said that if you're watching your kids by the pool, they like to have something to put up and put down. Mm. So I never thought about that, you know, because yeah. I'm kind of out of that phase, but mm -hmm. I get it. I get it. But. No, that's totally fair. If you know you're going to be interrupted every 10 minutes right. for, you know, juice boxes and snacks. <laughs> You don't want something that you have to really like focus on. Focus on for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, do you want to kick us off with one of the books that you didn't have to focus too hard on? Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to kick us off with something kind of light, um, but a little bit of romance, a little bit of twistiness. Okay. And of course, rich people on an island. What's not to like? You know, Perfect. when you have your own private island off the coast of Nantucket. This is Family of Liars, and this is the long-awaited prequel to the 2014, I believe, bestseller called We Were Liars, mm -hmm. which a lot of people, adults and teens, read. Um, so the Family of Liars is going to start with um, one of our rich, privileged, you know, family members. I think it's Caroline Sinclair, Carrie Sinclair. Um, Unfortunately, this family has a lot of tragedy as well. So they had a younger sibling who drowned last summer. Hmm. So this is the first summer that the family is together on their, their island retreat without the youngest child. Um, who Carrie starts seeing in like apparitions and having oh. visits with. Carrie may also have a little bit of a drug problem what? though as well. So, you know... Um, <laughs> So you also have a cousin that comes and brings, of course, young teenage boys to the island. Well, this causes a big kerfluffle because now the whole whole thing is like who loves who and, mm -hmm. you know. And, of course, we have a dead body at the end. So Perfect. Yeah. Always adds to the intrigue. Yeah. You know, how are they going to get away with it? But, of course, they're rich and powerful, so. So they're probably going to get away with of it. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, um yeah, 10 year old Rosemary drowns. So we have Penny, Bess, and who else? I'm trying to think. But, you know, the father, they're all kind of very typical. Like the father 
is very much into his heritage. You know, they have the different cottages on the beach. They have these elaborate games they play that only they play, like a lemon hunt, you know, and then fireworks afterwards. So it's fun reading about people that have money. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Just just to kind of immerse yourself in that lifestyle for a day or two. What would it be like? Yeah. Yeah. Lemon hunts. Yes. Apparently. A lemon hunt. (laughs) So, um... It's always a lot of fun. Uh, I actually like this one a little bit better than the other one mm. because this one is set like these characters. It would be like the early 1980s. So I related okay. a lot to the musical references, you know, the Madonna and mm-hmm. other things. It's like, oh, yes, I remember that. You know, some of the fashion they talk about. So it's a lot of fun. And that's why I think this one could have adult crossover mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. Because the 80s vibe that would be historical to the teens would be more like real life to a lot of the adults. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that sounds so good. Yeah. And it's very fast, very fast, mm-hmm. very quick read. Pick it up, kind of immerse yourself. Nice. You know, bingeable. A nice. bingeable book. Gotta like a binge book. Yeah. For sure. All right. Uh, my first book is going to be Killing Floor by Lee Child. So this is the first book in the Jack Reacher series. Uh, and they have recently adapted this book into a series for Amazon Prime called, I believe, Jack Reacher Yeah, is the series. It's gotten pretty good reviews, hasn't it? So my husband and I watched it, and we binged the series in like three days. It was, it was like perfect binge watching. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was like, well, you know what? I've never read any of the books. Let me pick one up and just see see what they're like. So this book was originally published in 1997, oh, wow. um, which is fascinating because in the book, so the main character, Jack Reacher, um, is former military police. And we're sort of given to understand that he is now out of the military because the Cold War is over. So, you know, military was shrinking a little bit and they were, you know, getting rid of staff and whatnot. Um, So when they made the series, they had to update things a little bit because the series is set present day. Okay. So they had to change a few things here and there. But so it was kind of funny, some of the throwback details in the book. Like every so often he talks about people's mobile phones. (laughs) I'm like, yes, we're all familiar with a mobile phone at this point. <laughs> so that was funny. A um, little bit of a throwback. Um, but the setup for the book for the whole series is this Jack Reacher guy. He is the child of military father. So he grew up on bases all over the world. And he joined the military at 18 and served, you know, for quite some time. And now he is out of the military and he's just kind of exploring the U.S. Mm -hmm. where he has never really lived and he hasn't seen any of the country really. So he kind of like hitchhikes and takes buses and walks everywhere to see the country that he protected for so long, right? And at the beginning of the book, he decides to take a trip through this small town called Margrave, Georgia, because a blues musician that he likes was rumored to have lived there for a while. So he wants to see if he can find any information, anyone who knows anything about Blind Blake, who's this blues musician. Um, And of course, immediately when he gets there, he gets caught up in a murder investigation. Um, And... In very short order, very short order, he goes from being detained as a suspect to, like, helping the police with the investigation. Like, very short order. So part of me was like, do we really think that the cops would just let some dude, military police background or not, like just share all of their information and let him like ride around with them and interview people. Maybe, (laughs) maybe not. They're usually pretty territorial. So, right. So it's just one of those things that you accept. Right. And move on. Um, So he gets pulled into this investigation. So there's um, some, you know, cop stuff and like spy stuff and, 
a whole plot that he helps to uncover. Um, in this one, there's a little bit of a romance, which I gather is not the case for all of the books. Like okay. sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. Um, but it definitely like the plot just keeps moving. Um, I would say this is not necessarily like high literature. <laughs> like the writing is perfect for a vacation read. Mm -hmm. Um, but it keeps moving and it's entertaining and it is, the series is quite faithful to the book. Um, so if you watch the series and you liked it, you'll probably enjoy reading the book yeah. and vice versa. Okay. Um, but yeah, plotty, it moves and it's a whole series. So if you binge one, you can binge like the next 24 books or okay. something like that in the Jack Reacher series. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to go with one that I actually read uh, an advanced copy mm -hmm. in January, and it's called Reckless Girls by mm -hmm. Rachel Hawkins, who also did The Wife Upstairs, mm -hmm. and I believe she's done some other kind of thrillery ones, but this cover is very summery. It's very beachy. Very beachy. So so my my initial synopsis of this was a f super fast, entertaining read. Another one of those books where traveling women are keeping secrets and murders abound. And I'm surprised that this book is published in January because it's a perfect trashy beach read. So when I read well, that, there I was you like, go. Oh, <laughs> let's, let's just resurrect this one. Yeah. So, we have our main character, Lux, who is working, and she's recently lost her mom. She's kind of on the outs with her dad. He hasn't really supported her. So she's dropped out of college and is, like, either working in a restaurant or cleaning in a, you know, hotel. And she meets this rich young man who has a sailboat who entices her to go sail to Hawaii and then he has to have repairs done on his boat, so now she's back to working in a hotel, and they meet two young girls, college age, that decide they're going to pay them $50,000 if they will, you know, drive them to this mysterious South Pacific island, um, which the island has a history of there was some kind of military thing there where people were trapped. There was cannibalism, possibly. So this is definitely not going to go wrong. Oh, Horribly oh, wrong. You, it's just, it's how is it going to go wrong? <laughs> how is it going to go wrong? Because you know wrong is coming. Right. Who are, who are these people? Are they really who they're supposed to be? And the answer is no. A resounding no. What? Are they really just superficially involved? Again, no. Um, so anyway, now we have uh, th these four. You know, who's going to end up with the rich guy, Nico? Well, who knows? Um, and then, of course, they get to the island. And here's it's another, like, yachty type of thing with another golden couple on it. You know, drinks are flowing. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing I will warn you is if you're a person that doesn't like F-bombs in the book... <laughs> Between 184 to 206 by different uh, unofficial counts, you know, wow. because these are, you know, when it was reading the yeah, arc. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I didn't count them, but someone else did. That's hysterical. So another another person described us as Bachelor in Paradise meets Dr. Moreau. <laughs> See, that actually makes me more likely to want to pick that up. Yeah, I know. Well, <laughs> like I said, if you want a perfect trashy beach read with people yeah. like out to, you know, stab yeah. each other in vengeance and, huh. and illicit love, well, this is well. your this is your jam, you know. Well reckless girls. <laughs> so the real problems start when another guy pulls up to this deserted island that now seven people have found. It's a party. It's a party. Um and he definitely brings some skeevy vibes, mm. and all of a sudden, everything starts to fall apart in pretty quick fashion. So um, we go from kind of like rich partying to absolutely total bonkers, you know. And uh, somebody does live, so I don't want to give you any spoilers. Somebody. Yeah. <laughs> But there's a lot of dead people, a lot of mysteries, a lot of people who aren't who they say they are. What? Yeah. Huh. A lot going wrong in Reckless Girls. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. Well, that sounds uh, 
like a bonkers train wreck I might need to check out. Yeah. If you want a bonkers train wreck for your vacation, I, I recommend this one. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to redeem myself with a slightly more literary pick at the end, but you know what? You all wanted vacation reads, so you got it. So here's what you get. That's right. <laughs> uh, well, mine is about as far from bonkers train wreck as you can get, Uh-oh. I think. Okay. Uh, which is Things You Save in a Fire by Catherine Center, um, who is having kind of a moment these days, mm-hmm. I think. Um, very popular. So this book, the main character is Cassie Hanwell. She is a firefighter in Austin, um, and she loves her life. She loves being a firefighter. She has a great crew that she's with, and she's kind of a rising star in the fire department. And in fact, in the kind of opening scene, she's at an award ceremony where she's being awarded um, like a recognition from the town for saving a bus full of kids, right? Um, And when she sees the person who is presenting the award to her, um, it's someone from her past, and she has a moment and, like, freaks out and beats the crap out of him on stage during this award ceremony. Oh. Right. Well. Yeah, kind of took a turn. Yeah. Um, just, and, just a bit. Right. So it's hard to come back from that. <laughs> like, she sent him to the hospital in the book. Right? After winning an award. After winning an award. For saving the children. For saving the children. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there's backstory that we'll get that kind of explains what happened, although you can probably start to guess almost even now what that backstory might be. Yeah. Um, So as a result of this whole debacle, Cassie is faced with a decision either to apologize to the guy that she beat the crap out of, or to lose her job. And she ends up resigning her job, uh, which is fortuitous because her estranged mother, who lives in Massachusetts, has been trying to get a hold of her and wants Cassie to come and live with her for nine months to a year to help her through some medical issues. Uh, Cassie wasn't inclined to take her mom up on that offer because estrangement also Massachusetts, Uh, but now she has sort of burned her whole life down (laughs) in Austin. So she packs up and moves to Massachusetts, where she starts working for a small town fire department, um, which is like every bro-y stereotype you can think of, of like a fire department, it's all there. So there's like the old fat firefighter who you're like, how can he even function? Yeah. Um, And the like super bro, like fireman calendar guys, like it's all there. Every single stereotype, they're all there. Um, And she does not fit in as well with this department that she is the first woman ever to have joined. Right. So classic old boys club. Um, And on the same day, there is a rookie who is also starting at the same firehouse. And, um, of course, there are, like, immediate sparks yes. between Cassie and the rookie, yeah. which is, like, the biggest no-no you don't date inside the firehouse. Hopefully she won't beat him up. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> so the whole book is kind of about Cassie trying to, like, find a new place for herself and win over the guys in the firehouse and all of this stuff. So that's the the plot of the book. Um, what I had said to Claire the other day when I was talking a little bit about this book before we came in to record Book Break is that, to me, it read a little bit like your therapist decided to write a novel. So really, so there's the plot of the book and then what the book is about. And what the book is about is like, dealing with trauma and finding forgiveness and the power of human connection and relationships, which is all very noble. And like all of that stuff is true. Um, There are no surprises in this book. Like everything that you think is going to happen will happen happens. Um, There is a very neatly tied up bow of a happy ending (laughs) at the end. Like 
every little thread is accounted for. Um, the only, actually, I should say there is one surprise, which is there's like an addiction subplot kind of tossed in at the end um, that I didn't quite feel was earned. It just kind of came out of nowhere okay. as a way of like explaining some other things that happened. Um, as you can tell, this is not like my typical, <laughs> my typical fair. Yeah. Um, this is not Kirsten's jam. No, it's not. And I read it and I'm not sorry that I read it. Will I pick up more of Catherine Center's books? Maybe not. Yeah. But she's super duper popular and lots of people love her. And, you know, I, if you ever found yourself wishing that Brene Brown wrote fiction, you should pick up Things You Save in a Fire because it will resonate with the like emotional truths of it. I just, it's okay. fine. Three star read for me. Interesting. But Beach Read, didn't yeah. have to think too hard about it. Right, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, my next one's gonna be a little bit of a divergent here. I just read this one. I liked it. It's um, Horse by Geraldine Brooks. Geraldine Brooks is a Pulitzer Prize winner. Mm -hmm. um, People of the Book and March was another popular one of hers. Hmm. She also wrote the one about the plague. Year of Wonders, Year of which Wonders. I absolutely loved. Yeah. So I, I had a feeling that the writing style was good. And of course, mm -hmm. I do like like horses and historical fiction. And this this had like two different plot lines. It has a more modern plot line and it has a historical one. Um, the historical one was really interesting. So you start out, there's a young man and he finds um, in his neighbor who is discarding things on the side of the walk in like Georgetown, um, Washington, D.C. Um, it's a painting of a young man and a horse, a young black man, I believe, and a horse. Mm -hmm. So he picks it up, kind of takes it, and um, then you find out the backstory that this horse is actually a horse called Lexington, which was one mm -hmm. of the most famous racing horses in like the 1800s. Mm -hmm. um, Lexington was owned by a black man who, of course, when he tried to race him, at that time, black people could not race a horse they hmm. couldn't like be the listed be owner of the horse oh the owner even. he couldn't yes and this man was the oh. owner because he had done so much work um for the owner originally mm -hmm. and had you know made him money with the racing that he gave him this horse because it was it. his idea to breed these two mm -hmm. which were at the time considered not very um compatible or like not mm -hmm. a good fit for breeding but he ended up with this horse. Um, so you're, you're dealing with slavery. You're dealing with just then Jim Crow, mm -hmm. um, this man with this horse, what happens to the horse. And, of course, the man also has a son. And, unfortunately, the man who gave him the horse, like the property owner, of course, something happens to him. So then the young son is separated, you know, has know. to go south, he wants to stay with this horse because he's, you know, his father has mm -hmm. let him train it and, and stay with it. So just everything he faces. Mm -hmm. And then we have a more modern thing of back to the guy that found that picture. And then he meets a young woman who is at the Smithsonian. And there is a horse bones that have been found and not cataloged that someone is looking for. Well, lo and behold, it's the horse ah. Lexington. So... Of course, they develop a romance, and he's black, she's white. And there's some modern-day racism, mm -hmm. a lot of things. It, it, it ended, I didn't like the ending. That was the only thing about this book. But I really, once I got engrossed in the story, and then it was also one of those stories where I started hitting the Google, you know, like, who is Lexington? Mm -hmm. Who is the owner? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I had to keep finding all this stuff mm -hmm. out. Um, so, yeah, I, th I thought it was really well done. Hmm. Um, it is a little sad at the end. Okay. And I'm not sure I've forgiven Geraldine Brooks for that. And for that, for the summer, you know. Sure. You may want to wait till November, but then again, you may be like me and just jump right in. But I thought that the cover was really cool. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful cover. 
Yeah, and it was just different. Yeah. I like different. Yeah. So. Um, Year of Wonders is the only of her books that I've read, but that sounds really interesting. Yeah, it was really interesting. I think this one might be a good book club pick. Mm. I'll have to see if there's enough copies in the system. Yeah. But, you know. Cool. Yeah. Nice. So you have the Smithsonian researcher. Oh, and you have a gallery owner, too, that gets involved. I forgot about okay. that. You know, and how the the portraits of, you know, the horse actually came to be. Mm. And how many of them there were. And it turns out there was an American master painter that was involved, too. So, Interesting. Yeah, a lot. And, and that okay. person was real as well. Hmm. So I, I like when historical fiction is presented in a way that you can believe it and she mm -hmm. doesn't like some things become so ludicrous and it's like oh queen mary did not do that <laughs> you know but this i i pretty much believed okay like i said the only thing i had trouble with was the modern romance and the ending okay yeah nice yeah still sounds good it was good okay yeah all right my last book is um much more of a classic kirstra Treed. Um, I just finished this one recently, and I really enjoyed it. It is Blood, Blood Sugar, pardon me, by Sasha Rothschild. Um, and there is actually a blurb on the back uh, from Zoya Stage, who was our first Grease Reads author. So um, Blood Sugar, this is a debut thriller. Uh, and the tagline on the cover of the book is, she's accused of four murders. She's only guilty of three. Oh, I love that. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. Right? So you go in knowing that our main character, uh, is a killer. Ruby, is a killer. Yeah. And I'm not going to... Th there's not a lot of spoiling. One of the murders takes place, like, in the first five pages of the book. Um, although it is a little surprising when you figure out exactly what's happening. I had, like, a... Oh, Oh, moment like this is where we're going. Okay. Yeah. Um, so Ruby, we know very much going in, has committed at least one murder in the past. Uh, when we meet her in the present day, she is being interrogated by the police who believe that she has murdered her husband. Uh, so the detective has four photos face down on the table and one by one, he's turning them over. And these are all people from Ruby's past. Um, so they clearly think that she murdered her husband, which we're pretty sure that she didn't. Um, but the interesting thing is that Ruby is a murderer, but she's also a very sympathetic character in a lot of ways. She's not a sociopath. She's not like... Um, like, she has emotions that she processes. She actually is a therapist and a pretty good one we're given to understand. Okay. Um, she loves her husband. She's an animal lover, like, all of these things. Um, but she's also... A killer. A killer, which is kind of interesting. So, like, is, is she, she a, like, a Dexter kind of killer? Or? I don't want to give okay. anything okay. away on right. that front. Um but it, there's definitely the question, like, is she a hero or an anti-hero? Right. Like, this sounds like a Claire read. I would definitely read this. Yeah, it's good. And I actually think it would be a good book club book because there's a lot to get at here about um, relationships and, like, what makes you a good person or a bad person. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a lot of that kind of stuff. So the... F the book is framed with this interrogation, and then we get flashbacks okay. into the past as we learn more during this interrogation. Um, so the meat of the book is trying to figure out, well, did Ruby kill her husband? Like, is she responsible for, for that murder? And, like, which are the other murders? We know one right off the bat, mm -hmm. but we're not 100% sure what the other ones are. So there's um, some teasing out of the backstory that plays a big part in how you feel about Ruby in the present. Okay. Um, but overall, I thought it was really well written. Um, the prose just moves and the plot moves and you get really invested in figuring out um, what happened to Ruby in the past, what Ruby did in the past, and what's going to happen to her in the present. Okay. So, yes. 
highly enjoyed. It also takes place um, almost all of it in Miami, which gives it a nice sort of vac- vacationy beachy right. feel. Yeah. You can imagine yourself with the palm trees and the beaches. Awesome. Yeah. So that's what we've got. Um, we would love to hear if um, you guys have read any of these books, if they count for you as vacation books, um, and if not, what kind of stuff you like to read on vacation right? Um, and what suggestions you have for us. Yeah. And next month, we're going to try and tackle romance. <laughs> And I've already read one. It's true. I'm so So proud. We're both stretching ourselves a little bit with the the romance. So we'll see how that goes. And if you all have any suggestions for really great romances that we can try and read and talk about in August, please do leave those in the comments because um, I, for one, could use some suggestions. We need a good sci-fi fantasy romance for you, Kirstra. Yeah. Yeah. That would be good. should look into that. Yep. You're so smart. I'll try. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. um, And we will see you in August. Yeah. Happy summer. Happy summer.